little bit more, it needs to come off the length. But other than that, I think it's fitting well. get the grating done that's going to be our floor that we work on in the blasting cabinet. The only thing left to do now is to make the gloves and kind of put everything together. I also need to find some hinges for the side door and figure out how I'm going to latch it. I think I'm going to use some cam over latches that will keep the door nice and tight. So this is the material that I use to make the gloves. It's a vinyl upholstery material. And it holds up relatively well considering the uh, environment that it's in. The first thing I'm going to do is make some rings and that'll actually serve as the gasket for the glove and the hole that it goes in. And then I'll make some trapezoidal shaped pieces and those will actually be the sleeve. I don't have the gloves yet. I'm getting those later on tonight. So I don't have the dimension for the smaller portion of the sleeve, but I can lay out the circles and one side of the larger portion of the sleeve. You'll see how it goes together as I do it. So we cut, we cut these rings out and I also cut some trapezoidal pieces to make the sleeves. The thing I did was, is I figured this diameter, where it was gonna be sewn, you gotta remember we're gonna leave a quarter inch for our seam and multiplied it by pi, 3.14. You take that diameter, multiply it by 3.14, and that gets you your length on one side. And then these are the gloves that we're gonna use. They're a leather glove. I think I paid eight bucks for a pair. And then we'll sew these on the other end, but we need to know what the diameter of this is. The only thing I did was I just wrapped the tape around it and measured that. It ended up being 10 inches, and that's what the other end of the trapezoid is gonna be. And then you just fold that trapezoid over and sew it. And then this is what you get the piece that looks like this. What we'll do then is we're gonna sew this ring on the end of this here, and then that'll get bolted to the sandblasting cabinet. And then the small end, the glove will get sewn on like this. And then after sewing, this is what we're left with. Kind of like a flange on a tube. And now we're just gonna sew the gloves on this other end. But So I'm actually kind of excited to see if this thing actually works or not. 
I just turned the vacuum on for a little bit and these gloves actually were pulled in. The intake should be plenty large enough to allow for air, but maybe some modification will have to be done with that. I need to get a light on the inside so I can see what I'm doing, but for now I'm gonna see if we can uh, sand in it, see if we can do some sandblasting and then go from there. Now these windows, they're 12 by 24. And the reason why I made them that size is because you can get this sheet of plastic to put behind them, and that measures 12 by 24. So I hope you like what you've seen this week. We have the sandblasting cabinet done. I wish the rims and the frame were done as well, but I just have to spend some long hours in front of the sandblasting cabinet and get it knocked out. This next week, probably won't have any videos uploaded. It is a holiday. I do want to spend some time with my family because that's what's important to me. I know a lot of you will probably have suggestions for the sandblasting cabinet or how you would have done it. That's fine. This is the second cabinet that I built and there's still things in it that I would change. Hindsight's always 2020. You can see it done a million times and always give suggestions when you're doing it. It's not always that case. Mm -hmm.